Hi, this is Erica McPhee from the Flourish Forum. Today we're going to do a tutorial on laying out an invitation using your hand-done calligraphy and Photoshop. This is how I create my invitations. There's lots of different ways to do it, but this is the system that works for me, and I hope you find it useful. The first thing you need to do is scan in your calligraphy, and then you do a threshold adjustment, as I taught you in the tutorial preparing your calligraphy for printing. If you haven't seen that tutorial and you don't know how to do a threshold, you might want to watch that before beginning this one. Then the next thing you're going to do is pull these layers into a new document. Um, the invitation we're going to be printing is about 5 by 7 inches, which is a little small to work with, so I'd like to create a document that's a little bit larger than my final size, and then I can scale it down afterwards. So I'm going to start with a 10 inches wide by 8 inches tall, because my invitation is going to be horizontal and a resolution of 600 dpi. Again, I'm going to shrink that down to 300 dpi once I'm finished, but I'd like to keep the resolution there while I'm working in case I need to size things differently. Okay, so I showed you in the other tu tu tutorial how to select your lettering and pull it into its own layer. So I'm just going to do that really quickly again to show you. Using your magic wand tool, you just click and hold down and select the lettering. And you get your little scissor tool there and pull it into your new document. And I'm going to do this with all of my layers. And I've done that already here. I've also pulled in an illustration that I have here. Um, this is something that I did specifically for this tutorial. It's a little tutu wand and crown. And I'm not going to worry about the size of this right now, but generally this is where it's going to be in the imitation. Now I need to line up my lettering. I'd like the top title, Arriving Soon Baby Girl Jones, to be a little bit larger than the rest. So I'm going to do Control T, which is Command T on the Mac, or Edit, Free Transform. And then I'm going to hold down my Shift key and pull the corners just to make it a little bit larger. I'm also going to rotate it just a little bit and then hit Enter. I'm going to put that right about there. I'm not going to worry about the exact lineup because I'll need to resize my document once I have all of these lined up. So for the next lines, I need these to be lined up. So I'm going to pull a guide down from my ruler. And I'm also going to show the grid because I want to make sure these are evenly spaced. So I'm just going to line that up with one of the horizontal lines. And then this is again going to be a control T and then a rotate and then enter Oops. until I get it just about where I want it. Because this lettering is a little bit more playful and it does bounce in the line a little bit, it doesn't have to be lined up exactly. If you were doing a more formal script like copper plate and grosser script, you'd want to line this up pretty well with this line right here. I'm going to go down about three boxes for the next line. And then I can line this up. I'm also looking generally at the alignment. This is going to be semi-centered. It doesn't have to be exact because it is a little informal. And then my next sign. And this one I scanned in two separate lines because I liked the way I did girl on another line. Oops. And then girl. And you can see that baby is a little bit off from the rest, and that's okay because it gives me an opportunity to show you how to fix this. I'm going to click on your lasso tool. Make sure you're on that layer and then circle it, selecting just those letters and then you can move this down and then control D is to deselect which is also the same as select, deselect and there you have that line. You continue doing this with all of your lines it's pretty easy. This one Saturday is lined up but November is a little crooked which is Okay, so we'll just do the same thing. Select just November. Remember, this is on its own layer, so it's not going to intersect with baby or girl. And you can rotate it separately. Get it just where you want it. 
I'm going to continue down until I have all the lines done. Okay, now I have all of my lines lined up. I'm going to go in and add the dots to the eyes now. I don't do this um, by scanning it in because I just find it's easier to add it afterwards and the dots are more consistent. Um, so I'm going to go in, add them to the first line. And then for the rest of the lines, I need to actually merge them so it's easier, so I'm not going layer by layer. But when I look here, I see the April Jones. I want to actually make that a little bit larger. So I'm going to merge those two layers together. So then we have just April Jones on its own layer. I'm going to do Control T. I'm going to hold down my Shift key, drag up. And then it looks a little bit... There we go. I just want a little bit of an emphasis on her names. If you're doing a wedding invitation, you might want the bride and groom's names to be a little bit bigger. Um, so you could do the same thing there. So now I need to play around with spacing just a little bit. Move up just a little. That looks about right. Okay, and then I can click on the please join, which is the top line, all the way to the bottom, and do control E, which is the same as layer, merge down, and that puts it all onto one layer. I'm not worried about my illustration right now, so I'm going to actually make that invisible. I'm just going to go in and dot all my eyes. Again, you just want to make sure the size is about what you want. That's a little bit bigger than I want. And I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I now have my lettering just about the way I want it. I have my header the way I want it. And then I have my illustrations, which I'm not going to resize just yet because I need to resize my lettering as well. So there's two ways you can do this going forward. Actually, there's probably more than that, but these are the two that I usually do. You can either create your own document, the size that you're going to be printing, which in this case is 5 by 7 I usually add a half inch extra give on all around for printing purposes. Or you can resize the document that you're working in now. I'm going to create the new document because resizing the document gets a little tricky and sometimes you can't see all of your lettering. So my new document is going to be 7.5 inches wide by 5.5 inches tall. And I'm working at 300 resolution because that's going to be my final printing resolution. And that's my new document. And really, all you're going to do oops, is you're going to pull your lettering into this document here. And then you're going to resize it. However, I would suggest the first, before doing that, click on image, image size. And oops, we already did a resolution at 300, so we don't have to worry about that. You can click and hold down all three layers, drag them all in. And you can see they're pretty large for this document, but that's okay. And the first thing we want to do is resize, resize our title. I'm just going to eyeball it for right now. And then we're going to resize our invitation lettering part. That's still just a little bit too big. And this is where you want to make sure you're not lettering too big initially, because when you resize this, it can sometimes get too small for printing. And especially if you're working vertically, so it's 5 by 7 instead of 7 by 5, you really don't have a lot of room on either side, especially if you have long lines. You need to make sure that your lettering isn't going to be too small once you go to print this. Yeah, that's about right. And then my illustrations will need to be resized. My tutu go down just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to turn it like this because it fits nicely with this little area here. The wand, you can do Control Shift T, which is re uh, do the same thing that you just did, and then resize. Actually, I like it like this because it points right to here. And then my crown, resize just a little bit there. And then you can play around with this until you get it just the way you like it. 
So now it's starting to really come together and look like an invitation. At this point, you may want to, um, getting rid of my grid, add your guides here to make sure you're not going over. So you can click on new guide, 0.25, new, new guide, 6.75, oops, it's not enough, 7.25. And this way you know when you're printing that you'll get all of your lettering inside the printing guidelines. Okay, so we can see our header is a little bit too close to the edge. Resize it, and really it's just playing around, it's getting it the way you like it. I think I like it right about there. And this needs to be just a tiny bit smaller. There. And once you have it just the way you like it, in designing, you always want to have your elements not competing with each other. So you want to have like a papa bear, mama bear, and baby bear. And in this case, this is sort of competing with this because they're almost the same size. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit more. I don't want it to be too small because it is an important part of my design element, but I want to be able to give enough space so that we can see the lettering and also the design. There, that looks just about right. Then your next step would be to add color if you're going to be sending this to um, a photo printer that does press printing. But if you're going to be letter pressing or um, sending this to a flat printer, you wouldn't need to add color at this point. However, I printed these myself, so at step three, I just added a color layer like I showed you in the preparing your calligraphy for printing tutorial. And I added it to the invitation part as well as the title. I forgot to add the RSVP so I just put it in text at the bottom. And then for my final invitation, I actually printed them off, added a little bit of watercolor, a little bit of glitter, some silver paint, and then some liquid pearls so they have a nice 3D effect. And that's how you prepare your invitations using your calligraphy in Photoshop. I hope you find that useful. If you have any questions, just pop into the forum and let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.